In our recent video, we looked at how the Royal Navy took the naval strike missile to sea for the first time with HMS Somerset, including that headline grabbing test firing off Norway at the start of October. But the naval strike missile isn't the only new anti-ship weapon to make headlines recently. October also marked another major milestone, this time for the fleet air arm and its Wildcat maritime attack helicopters. The Royal Navy has officially declared initial operating capability for the MBDA Sea Venom missile. In effect, the Wildcat helicopter has evolved from being a capable reconnaissance and patrol aircraft into an offensive strike platform, giving the fleet a brand new layer of punch. What's more, this milestone wasn't declared during quiet trials off the UK coast. It happened on the other side of the world during Operation High Mast, the Royal Navy's current global deployment in the Indo-Pacific region. That's one of the most complex and strategically charged regions on Earth. So confirming initial operating capability there was a deliberate choice. It proved the system works in demanding real-world conditions, not just on paper. Four Wildcats from 815 Naval Air Squadron are now flying with Sea Venom on this deployment. They're not all sitting together on HMS Prince of Wales either, they're distributed across the task group, operating from the Type 45 destroyer HMS Dauntless and the Norwegian frigate Roald Admundsen. By spreading Sea Venom armed Wildcats amongst the escorts, the Royal Navy creates a flexible, over the horizon anti service warfare network. Each helicopter becomes a mobile strike node, extending the reach of the entire carrier strike group far beyond what surface ships could alone achieve. It's a force multiplier in every sense, or, as one naval commander described it, a step change in combat power. So what makes the Sea Venom such an important addition? It's part of the future anti-surface guided weapon program, and it replaces the legendary sea skewer missile that served for decades before being retired in 2017. Sea Skewer saw action in the Falklands and the Gulf War, where it racked up a remarkable hit rate against enemy vessels. It became one of the Royal Navy's most successful small anti-ship weapons, sinking or damaging 14 vessels. Sea Venom is its modern successor, bigger, faster and far more capable. It's designed to destroy medium-sized surface combatants, such as corvettes and large patrol vessels, but it can also seriously damage larger vessels when launched in volleys. Each missile weighs around 120 kilograms, carrying a 30 kilogram semi-armor piercing warhead. A single Wildcat can carry up to four of them, allowing for powerful salvo attacks that can cripple or sink smaller warships and disable larger ones. Then there's the range. Sea Venom can strike targets well beyond 20 kilometers, with some reports suggesting up to 30 kilometers in optimal conditions. It flies at high subsonic speed, skimming just above the waves to avoid radar detection. That combination of low altitude and long reach means the Wildcats can, get, can engage targets from outside most ships' defensive envelopes. This makes the missile a perfect fit for the modern fleet. Sea Venom fills a vital gap in the Royal Navy's ability to hit ships from long range. And it's not limited to naval targets either. The missile's precision guidance and adjustable impact modes make it also useful for coastal suppression and land attack roles. That versatility turns a Wildcat into a valuable asset for littoral operations. The kind of close to shore, fast moving environments the Royal Navy increasingly finds itself working in. Where Sea Venom really shines is in its guidance system. It uses an imaging infrared seeker, which produces a clear, high resolution image of the target area. That means it can pick out the right ship, even in cluttered environments, say a busy shipping lane or a crowded harbour, where older radar guided systems might struggle. But the real game changer is the two way data link between the missile and the Wildcat. This allows the crew to watch what the missile sees and even make decisions mid-flight. It's what's called the operator-in-the-loop system. 
That gives the crew several powerful tactical options. In-flight retargeting. If a higher priority threat appears after launch, the missile can be redirected in seconds. Aim point correction. The crew can fine tune where the missile strikes, perhaps aiming for a ship's bridge, radar mast, or engine room for maximum effect. Board capability. If a civilian vessel crosses into the path or the situation changes, the missile can be safely disarmed before impact. This level of control is hugely valuable in modern conflict zones, where the line between combatant and civilian can blur quickly. It gives commanders the confidence to use lethal force precisely and responsibly. In short, Sea Venom delivers the accuracy and flexibility of a modern precision weapon while retaining the sheer destructive potential for the fleet air arm needs. The Wildcat's new strike capability doesn't rely on Sea Venom alone. It's part of a broader approach known as the High-Low Mix. Here, Sea Venom provides the heavy, long-range punch, the high end, while the Martlet missile, also known as the lightweight multi-roll missile, covers the short-range rapid response roll. Martlet is a different beast. It weighs only 13 kilograms and carries a 3 kilogram dual effect warhead that combines fragmentation and shape charge damage. It's designed for quick engagement against small, fast moving threats, think speedboats, drones, or swarming craft often using asymmetrical warfare. Martlet is supersonic, exceeding Mach 1.5, and has an effective range of 6 to 8 kilometers. It's guided using semi active laser homing which means it follows a laser spot painted by the Wildcat sensors. In practical terms, this combination gives the Wildcat complete coverage. Against a swarm of small, fast targets, Martlet offers the volume of fire needed to keep them at bay, with each Wildcat carrying up to 20 Martlets. Against larger warships or coastal targets, Sea Venom provides the devastating long-range strike. Together, they turn a single helicopter into a versatile anti-surface warfare platform, equally capable of defending the fleet or striking offensively. It's this pairing that underpins the fleet air arms new doctrine. Sea Venom for reach and power, Martlet for speed and precision. Between them, there are very few threats the Wildcat can't handle. With initial operating capability declared, the Royal Navy now has a helicopter that can deliver true multi-role strike power. The Wildcat has evolved from being a primary scout and patrol aircraft into a fully-fledged strike platform. Its ability to launch precision high-damage missiles at range gives the carrier strike group a major boost in flexibility and lethality. Instead of relying solely on ship launch weapons, the carrier strike group now has an aerial strike layer that can hunt, shadow, and destroy targets well beyond the fleet's immediate line of sight. For potential adversaries, that complicates the picture. Any surface vessel closing in on the British carrier group now has to consider that even a small helicopter on the horizon may be capable of delivering a crippling blow. That alone increases deterrence and strengthens Britain's hand in contested waters. In the longer term, Sea Venom also ties neatly into the Royal Navy's broader shift towards distributed lethality, spreading striking power across more platforms instead of concentrating it on a few ships. It's a philosophy built for modern, networked warfare where flexibility and reach often matter more than raw size. The Sea Venom's entry to service marks a moment of regeneration for the fleet air arm and for the Royal Navy's maritime strike capability. It delivers precision, range, and control in a package that's small enough to be carried by a helicopter, yet powerful enough to destroy a warship. Combined with Wartlet, it also ensures the Wildcat can handle everything from swarming craft to major surface combatants, exactly the versatility a modern navy needs. Above all is a statement of intent. The Royal Navy is equipping itself not just for today's missions, but for the contested, complex environments of the future, where precision, flexibility and information dominance will matter more than ever.
So what do you think? Does the addition of Sea Venom and Martlet finally make the Wildcat a true strike platform? Or should the Royal Navy be thinking bigger? Perhaps accelerating research and trials of new UAVs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.